Okay, so folks, I've been on the phone um, talking to counterparts around the world and also I've met with the 80 employees working at Global Affairs as we speak on the evacuation of civilians that are in Sudan. First and foremost, we have 1,700 people that have re been registered. All of them have been contacted by Global Affairs Canada. Um, so, of course, anybody that has loved ones or families in Sudan should make sure that they go and register online on Global Affairs Canada. Really important. Second, it is important that people understand that for us, dual nationals are, of course, Canadians, because a Canadian is a Canadian. So that's why our numbers are important when com in comparison with other countries. The other thing also is of the 1,700 people that have been contacted, 550 have asked for assistance. 100 of them have already left Sudan. And so therefore, we will continue to engage because the ceasefire, which is holding while the situation is still fragile, is helping evacuation efforts. We are providing help different ways. The first one is through the fact that many people that are not necessarily in Khartoum and closer to borders of neighboring countries are leaving by themselves. So Global Affairs and our diplomats are helping them to have access to information. For example, where is the next uh, uh, you know, uh, fuel station and if it's open or not? Or where's the next pharmacy and if it's open or not? So we're working on that to help Canadians uh, going, for example, to South Sudan or Egypt or uh, other neighboring countries. I've already negotiated safe passage with many countries, including Kenya, including Ethiopia, including Egypt. Um, also, we are part of international coordination efforts. So we've been able to make sure that Canadians would be on flights of other countries or would be assisted by other countries. To that extent, I would like to thank Germany, France, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia for helping evacuate uh, our own Canadians. Meanwhile, you heard the Prime Minister, we are working on uh, making sure that we do our own civilian evacuation, but we're not losing time, and we're making sure that this is happening as we speak. So meanwhile, on the diplomatic front, I've been engaged with many countries, as I mentioned, Egypt, Kenya this morning, IGAD, which is the organization in charge of the regional cooperation in the region. The Prime Minister has spoken to Ethiopia. Uh, he spoke with the head of the African Union this morning. I also spoke to uh, the UAE. And I'll continue to engage. We call for ceasefire. We will hold the uh, person that are, un uh, uh, that are committing any form of crimes accountable and will work also with like-minded countries and of course the UN to make sure that eventually we're able to have a ceasefire that holds for a long time and we get to peace. Thank you. So you want me to do this in French? <laughs> we'll do. Okay. Well, there are many differences. First and foremost, the situation in Sudan happened very quickly. I was in Japan with all G7 ministers last week, and basically um, the, uh, the, this, the, 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 the violence has started, and it took everybody, it took the world by surprise. So what we learned is we needed to be coordinated. So that's why very quickly last week we sent people from Global Affairs Canada to Djibouti to be part of this international coordination efforts to make sure that there could be evacuation of civilians. Meanwhile, we know that the situation is extremely difficult and until the ceasefire that happened last, uh, la last night, well, Khartoum was one of the most dangerous places in the world. 70% of hospitals are not working, streets are, uh, are extremely unsafe, and there is an issue with uh, both military not necessarily having command and control on their folks. And so that makes it a very volatile environment in which we can help to evacuate. Now, I think that uh, what is really important is that Canadians know that they can count on their government and Global Affairs Canada to help them. 
but we need to have information to be able to help them. So in that sense, if there are any Canadians that are still in, in Sudan right now and have not registered with the embassy, please do so because we will work based on the information we have and we want to help and we want to be as precise, direct and transparent as possible.